searching the dark side of the mountain Through my bones and hair and blood Words rise and cold snatched from my mouth To sink them into the cold black mud Howdy, everybody. Welcome to Old Gods of Appalachia. Old Gods of Appalachia is a horror campaign that may contain material not suitable for all audiences. Listener discretion is advised. Well, neighbors, they say that family is always there. Sometimes they're there for you, and sometimes they're there, yeah, and sometimes they're there for you. It's all nuanced when a family rises from nothing by their bootstraps, as it were to a place of authority. At some point, those who live in their communities know full well they're on the wrong side of the tracks when the tracks are laid. Guilty Hole ain't no different, and here, everyone seems to be on the wrong side of the tracks from the seats of both money and power. Let's bring in our, our family to get us going. All right. Why don't we start? We'll, we'll let everybody go around, say who they are, where they can be found, and all those things. Why don't we start with William tonight? Hi, I am Selena. You can find me at ABCD Far on a lot of the social medias, and I will be playing William Matheson, uh, the, ex the cursed explorer who cannot escape the darkness. All right. Annie. Hi, everybody. I'm Annie Lynn McSweeney, and I am an honorable game warden that walks these woods. And you can find me at Lady 80 Paints on most social media. I paint, I stream, I act. Thank you. <laughs> Jericho. Uh, I'm Jericho Elagast, and I'm going to be playing Ra Ra tonight, um, who hangs out on Blue Sky most of the time. But Jericho is a superstitious herbalist who serves the green. And Evangeline. Hi, I'm Juicy, Juicy Garland, a Boston area drag queen and super nerd. And you can find me on most of the social medias at Juicy Garland. And I am playing Evangeline tonight. And if I were smart enough to bring up my character sheet, which I just did, you would know that I am Evangeline Antonia Blank, an uppity explorer who would rather be reading. And has read quite a few books since we started. I think we've had two or three books fully fleshed out in, in right before your eyes in one or two cases, it seems. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> when last we left, there was kind of a disaster happening that, that the group kind of um, assisted in the disaster and of, uh, I guess would be a, a way of saying it, pumping the, the guilty hole full of alcohol until it could be blown up. And it and blowed up it did. But there was an injured victim of all this, the father of Annie Lynn found in the house right next door, who is now en route to aid somewhere in the town, driven by William and Evangeline, taking him to, well, to a doctor, I suppose. And, but back at the, at the house, there were a few unexpected things that happened. There were some figures seen in the shadows that were doing something to to Paul McSweeney, not sure what it was. Their hands were going through his body like, you know, like boogers do. And that is where we are at this moment. We are standing inside that house with Jericho looking out at Annie Lynn, who is out by the tree, obviously was upset. Could we get a time check about how late at night is it at this point? It would be somewhere around 8 o'clock. <clears throat> dark, though. Yes, dark. Early dark, but right. dark. Uh, did our... the, the cavern just exploded, right? It did. It, it blew up, blew part of the, the front of it out. Rocks and fire flew into the air. Uh, do as I well take as it, other do I... things. <laughs> do I have to dodge? Because I think I was outside. Time to have you, to dodge any uh, you will debris. have to dodge the falling debris more than the debris going up. 
So okay. I'll let I'll give you a, a dodge in the dark though, so you are hindered by one. All right. Oh, are you gonna get hit by a tentacle in the face? That's I gross, know. Annie. And it'll be great if I, I have have my real dice this time. So <laughs> no more I, virtual dice. I remembered after last week too. <laughs> yeah, because those virtual dice are cursed. <laughs> Just so you know. <laughs> All right, yeah, uh, so I got to dodge this, cursed. yeah? Yes. Um, let me see here. So that is uh, my speed, yeah? Yes. Okay. Well, this dice is also cursed, because that was a two. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> something came down and, and hit you very hard from above, hitting you for four damage and it was not hard like a rock, more like hard like a, a walrus <laughs> falling Ouch. from the sky. And it is right. heavy, and it has fallen hard. Can you make me a might check also to see if you are able to not get pinned under the weight of this thing? Yes. Andy, be careful. Well, Jerry, you, know, you see <laughs> yeah. this thing come down. You, you, the explosion happened, okay. and you saw it fall but only as it hit okay the house itself was pelted with small rocks and bits of fire did my little ghost friends who i picture as the little naked forest butts and princess mononoke um did <laughs> did they disperse when the explosion happened or were they already gone they had gone already kind of like right. when you turned your head they were gone oh they would <laughs> that, that's when they all go you know yeah, I got a, I got a six. Yeah, you're so. stuck under that. What is obviously from at this point a bit of tentacle, and while you're under it, you s the oddest thing happens: an eye on the tentacle opens and is looking at you. Oh hell no! You know, just on the side in just one spot, and you kind of see that from from your vantage point too, Jericho. A couple eyes open at different points along the tentacle gross and they slowly start to close but the one looking at you is looking hard annie is Am Annie I... like under a very large amount of rubble or under a large tentacle okay all right a heavy large Big tentacle. slab of tentacle okay uh so can i just Stab it with my hunting knife. Am I am I restrained at all, or am you I just able have to, to wait on you? With with enough time, you can roll it off. So okay. yes, you can get free of a, an arm free and be able to stab. And I'm running towards. And it, her it will too. take no roll. It it is right in front of you. It's just getting the knife yeah. and doing it. That's all. I'm just gonna um yeah just like pull out the knife in my side uh, pocket and just start like just like stabbing it. If, in Annie, the island. if Annie did not know what Iker was in the past, she now has I know, no. an understanding <laughs> of what Iker is and looks like, and worse, smells like. As it ah! comes out and sprays, and you get that all across your arm and face and hand and knife. Jericho, what oh. are you doing when she's stabbing at this thing and trying to roll it off? Oh, I'm, I'm it running towards her. a little bit, just not much. If, if I've made it there already, I'll probably see what she's busy doing and grab like the thinner end and kind of try to leverage with her, but be like, yeah. oh, Annie, you're making yourself gross. Um, and then Annie gets into this like primal rage and starts like, you motherfucking bastard, and just starts just like stabbing this like. And, and Annie ain't no cusser in mo most cases. I yeah. dropped the tentacle to That's cover brilliant. my ears. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I say like every <laughs> single swear word you could possibly think of under the sun as I'm stabbing this <clears throat> and tentacle. You're stabbing Jericho's rolling it up, pulling it off you, and the tentacle goes completely limp after just a moment. And it is obvious that it is dead flesh at this point, and the last couple of eyes close completely, and you almost can't even see them on the tentacle. Is it like log sized or thinner it's, than it's, that? No, it's log at the at the heavy end. Good, because I want to sit on it, just like, Ugh, and start rolling each of us a cigarette as we just sit in the goo. <laughs> I take it and I just like 
I'm covered in just like black goo, like face just like is just spattered on me. And I take I take the cigarette and I try to go light it and a piece of black goo from my hat drops <laughs> and extinguish it. Oh, <laughs> and I'm just like, well, fuck it. And I just throw the cigarette on the ground and I'm just like, I'll roll her another one. Uh, you, really, <laughs> you really hate tentacles, Eddie. <laughs> I hate the tentacle that almost killed my father. If anybody's gonna kill my father, it's gonna be me. Both sides of that scary coin are fair. <laughs> um, here, this maybe this one. Let me. Here's a handkerchief, Annie. Right. Yeah. And then I like just take my hat off and just like <laughs> put it back on. Right, right, right. On foot, how far are we from town? It's a, it's a decent little haul. Yeah, it's correct? a bit of a way. It's a bit of a way. It is not a, a quick, quick walk. You you probably be walking in a good clip. You'd probably get to town in about an hour. Mm. Ah. You think your dad's okay? I'm sure he'll be fine, but I'll I'll check on him in a minute. I. I ain't never seen anything like this in my life, Jericho. I ain't never seen these tentacles. I ain't never seen these eyes, these ghosts, these boogers, these anything. I never seen any of this. I'm only here to protect the the animals in the woods, the, the plants in the woods. I ain't here to protect against all this. And I just like take <laughs> black goo and flick it off. You look like a football player probably now. Yeah. Black I, eyes. Annie, I, I, I know I say a lot of <laughs> a weird things, um, but lately has been a bit much for me, for me as well. Like, I'm used to, you know, playing with flowers and enjoying a little bit of nature magic here and there. I have no idea what that was. Um, but I think we just killed it, so... Uh, well, I think I've done stabbed enough times that if I don't kill it, well, God himself probably can't kill it at this point. Are you more upset about your dad being hurt or what you found out about your mom? It's been a rough uh, couple of weeks, to say yeah. the least. I uh, found out magic is real. I find out that monsters are real. Mm -hmm. I found, well, yeah, I guess. <laughs> found out my dad lied to me for 30 years of a life about my mom. Mm -hmm. Uh, and on top of it all, I feel the intense guilt that I pushed my daddy away to the point where he got attacked by that thing that we almost lost our lives to. So I'm, I'm not doing too well. I'm not, I'm not doing too well, Jer. Do you feel guilty or do you feel angry? All the above. That's if it's fair. able to check all those boxes, <clears throat> I think I'm angry and and sad and, and frustrated and I, I mean I I'm a good shot, Jer. I, I got medals to prove it, but I, I don't know if I'm a good enough shot for all this. All I know is I wanna protect my town. I wanna get whatever the hell this thing is out of my town. It, I've told I've mentioned, you know, my brother uh to you once or twice, but um when we were in the war, like he was the hero, he was the soldier, like he was going to, he was going to win the whole damn thing himself. Uh, I, I was just hoping to take care of a few hurt people um, during the process, but it was hard because the so-called enemy looked like our mom and our allies looked like our father and we were right at the border and the violence was confusing and it wasn't managed well, and, and I did a foolish thing, and he ran to help me, and the next thing I saw was dusk through all the holes riddled through his body. Um, my brother Joshua, um, all my walls came down with Joshua, uh, and I changed after that. But I know a little bit about that guilt. Um, Maybe if I hadn't been such a dreamer, I wouldn't be trying to help a wounded enemy child in the middle of combat. Uh, and then maybe Joshua would still be here to shine, where some of us were more meant to adore those who do. Uh, all I'm trying to say is I feel for you, Annie. Sometimes there's, there's no way out besides forward. 
Well, I know you may not think you're a hero, but I sure as hell am happy I had you by my side half the time, Jerry. I tell you what, you're a hero to me, and you'll be oh. a hero to the rest of us the rest of these days. I tell you what. Oh, I just walk with strong people that keep me safe. <laughs> but oh, man, the things I get strong. to see. <laughs> you just as strong. You just as strong. You just as tall, and you just as brave as the rest of us. And I'm sure if your brother were here now, he would be so proud to see where you are. Oh, you know, he was beautiful, Annie. Um, I'm sure he was, if he's anything like you. All right, all right. <laughs> Speaking of, how how brave are you feeling tonight? I'm feeling brave as hell. I want to go shoot something between the eyes, and I want to see it wiggle on the ground. Where are we going? I don't think we're too far from a pretty important location. It's also dark. We're missing some of our friends, and we're a little banged up. Um, but if you want to take a stroll, there's a path away from town, or there's a path towards town. You think you got another fight in you? I'm hoping it won't be a fight. I'm hoping it'll be more of a find out. Then let's go find out. Uh, well, as you y'all say, uh, fuck yeah. Yeah, fuck yeah. Hell yeah. Even. That's, that's the one. <laughs> Back in back in the uh, T.J. Booker's alcohol dream truck, Evangeline is driving like a mad woman hitting these bumpy roads. Ah, oh, goddamn! These uh, trees are everywhere. Ah, <clears throat> jeez, fucking and like, I'm I'm looking like behind us, like seeing the explosion oh, and everything. I'm just like blast. Oh, how I w wish someone would invent some sort of belt in the seat that would keep us restrained. <laughs> While you're in that vehicle, though, driving. Hope everyone's okay. Brooke. William, you're in the back seat with with uh, Paul McSweeney. So, mm. but in the front seat, Evangeline, you're driving, and the lights are causing sort of this tunnel effect with the trees mm -hmm. all around. My and dad's name is Victor. Sorry, Victor. Just my... Victor. Yes. Is Victor my dad? Who knows. <laughs> And while you're while it's happening, you're kind of remembering back to your time in the tunnel in that hotel, the the Biltmore, and yes, in in Boston. And as you're kind of reminiscing back in your mind, you kind of remember that the the tentacles on that squid or whatever it was that ran the length of that tunnel. They had these odd textures to them that, in retrospect, now having seen what you had seen tonight, may have been eyes up and down those tentacles. And you kind of remember that the way that they moved in the light made them feel like you were being watched, even as a kid. And while you're looking at it, like you can see it clearly in your mind's eye, and you know you're still driving, you're you're heading to to town mm -hmm. where you're gonna find medicinal stuff, but it it is it is not life if things do not come back to you in memory as you go through traumatic things. The memory of the uh, tentacles on the mural does that remind me of what we saw in the tunnel? It, it does. It reminds you of what you experienced here tonight and the image in the tunnel when you were a kid. You know, William, uh, these trees aside, uh, watch out. Um, I think I've seen something like that thing before from the tunnel. Okay, what? Uh, yes, uh, on a mural um, back in Boston uh, when I was a child. Uh, sure. And what does this have to do with our per current predicament? Ah, uh, I don't know, but it may be significant and I wanted to say something. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, it just I acknowledge occurred to me. that information. Uh, yeah, it, it, how you doing, Mr. Uh, McSweeney? Are well, you all right back there? And you're looking at him and, his, you know, he's barely got anything on. So you can see all these round wounds wrapping about, about his body. And they are partially filled with a... Uh, 
well, pus and blood would be would be the nicest way of saying it. Mm-hmm. And you can tell that he is moving about in in pain. Every movement causes a moan. And then he pops up right in front of you, and his hands they ah. they, sl- they didn't slide to. They ended up on your neck. Uh, mine or his? On on William's neck. Great. I, Honestly, where's she at? Where's she at? And he starts squeezing. She's... I'm gonna slam on the brakes. <laughs> okay. Everybody flies forward. Then, boom. <laughs> Now, Mr. McSweeney, she is okay. She is with Jericho, and we are getting you some help. And I'm just gonna like, where where are swerve we? Swerve out of this. Where the hell are we? We're we're out here in the dark in the woods. Uh, uh, lay back down, my good man. We're getting you to some doctors or something. Just uh, calm down. And and he looks like even the the damage from hitting the the back of the car seat in front of him which those car seats on the back are not soft or cushioned. They are hard. Seems to have him sort of disoriented again, and he kind of lays back, and his eyes close, and he just moans in pain again. If you don't stay the hell down, we'll have to tie you down, all right? We're gonna go. I I think I'm just, like, kind of just keeping a hand on his chest, just keeping him down, just sitting next to him, just kind of, kind of doing that, like, bodyguard, protective, just keeping him secure as much and, as a, as what could be a seatbelt as i can and, and i do want to say that one of the level up abilities i am taking is something in the road okay which uh allows me to hit things with car better <laughs> yes. um, and i continue to drive car bashing yes <clears throat> mr mcsweeney re- reaches up to you william and he puts his hand on your neck again, but not like in a choking manner, more like he's trying to pull you down to to him. I'm still keeping that kind of gesture of like, stay got, down and I'll just kind of like lead in. I, I, I gotta, I gotta find her, you know, she has to she's know okay. where, where, where is she? She's gotta, she's gotta know. She's okay. And she's safe. She's with Jericho. Just as you're speaking, he, he goes unconscious again. How much further, Evangeline? Uh, I don't know. You live here. I don't. You tell me. <laughs> I barely me. live here. Um, just keep going and like try it. Like trying to keep track of so many things at once. You do see just a keep... couple of lanterns up ahead that you know to be the bridge that cross into town. Finally. Yes, yes, I see the lights. And you see the light. And his eyes are closed. Drury ain't Drury ain't ain't who she seems, you know. She serves. And he he kind of stays down. And and she's got so so many of us under her gaze, so many of us, and for so long, it, where's Annie? I, I need to see her. She, I got to tell her these things. I, I, she, she's on her way. We're getting you help. This. You know, we ain't got no way out, all of us here in the town that have been here for a long time, but, but you, uh, you all can, uh, and he goes unconscious again. And as you're getting to the light, you see there are a couple of figures on the bridge, in the middle of the bridge, standing, probably just drunks or something on the road. And they are looking towards honk. the car. Honk, 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 honk. Get out of the way! Honk, honk, honk. And they start walking towards the car. Maybe they're trying to get off the bridge on the side you're coming. Who, who knows? Well, they've been warned. <laughs> I'll, I'll, like, lean out the window and just, like, kind of, like, motion, like, get get out of the fucking way! Medical mer- emergency or something. Jesus Christ. And you feel a hand grip your arm. We, we ain't got no way out, but 
you and Annie and your friends, you can get out of here. You gotta save yourselves. This town is not savable. Everybody here is in debt. Which, of course, makes no sense. Everybody owes a little bit of something here and there. And then he kind of, his arm, his hand slides down your arm. And those people out on the road, they don't look like they're exiting the bridge as they get to the edge. They look like they're heading towards the car. Can you make me a perception check, Evangeline, while you're driving? The headlights oh. are are now filling, flooding the, the area in front of you. I would love to. And I am trained, I believe. Let me just double check. Uh, oh, uh, yes. Uh, but I rolled a one. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> As you're getting closer, one thing that kind of strikes you is the fact that they're they're not moving at an accelerated pace. They seem to be moving at the same pace they were when they were on the bridge. Do not seem to be trying to step out the road. Um, just sort of walking towards your car. As you're uh, uh, up. Did you hear me light. blow if you don't want to get bopped? And you notice thrill. as you're driving that their clothes seem very disheveled and dirty and torn. And oh, I'll break it then. Yeah, I'll break. No, no, no. Should I break or no? Uh, fuck, I don't. He needs to get to a hospital. He's talking like he's about to die right now. All right, then. And I'm, if they if they don't want to get hit, they'll get out of the way. Uh, I guess, um, are we, are we talking, like, disheveled, like, they have been harmed and need help? Or they're disheveled like they are the walking dead? More like the latter, if the, if that was a thing, you know, that doesn't actually yeah. happen. Yeah, we've know, seen a lot of shit today, so I'm going to just continue driving <laughs> the vehicle, and I'm going to use my brand new ability. <laughs> they do the oddest thing as you get closer to them. They do not even try and step aside. There's only one, really, that is in the way, quote-unquote. Ah, the other then two I, are kind of on the sides of that one with a little space between, but there's definitely one that would, to cross the bridge would have to be dealt with. Uh, then perhaps uh, I've made a good choice. Onward and upward I go. <laughs> okay, make me that that new uh, that new role with striking people with your vehicles. Yes. So uh, something in the road is uh, when I use a vehicle as a weapon, I inflict five additional points of damage. Excellent. All right. Can yes. You... So. Uh, I guess, um, what sort of... I'm going to give you a drive, which would be a speed check. A speed check. Okay. All right. Please My... roll well. Yup. My speed is 11. Okay. You're, you're rolling against a 9, so you're going to do fine. I've rolled a 3. Okay. So you went to hit it, and maybe your 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 subconscious concern about running over people to their death got you, and the truck sort of slides sideways a bit, and you do hit that person, but you also hit other another one of the others as the slot truck goes sideways, and slams into the bars of the bridge. I've never murdered a man who wasn't attacking me before. At the, at the time that this happens, though, William, you reaching out and telling everyone to, to, to get out of the way, there was one on that side who reached and tried to grab at you. Can I get a defense roll from you, William, to, against mm. against a nine? Ooh, ooh. Against a three, a level three. Mm. Give me Not one second. Not be grabbed and held or pulled at from outside, and it is definitely not um, a lively person, I would say. And, okay. God damn it. Why didn't I not give myself an edge in speed? <laughs> Shit happens. That's a 19. Oh. Yeah, you defended well. You It went to grab at you. It reached for your arms. The door happened to fly open under your weight and push it outwards, and it fell into the creek right under the bridge. But you are now stuck sideways, partially sideways on the front of the bridge with a body stuck between the car and the post and one body coming towards 
your door, Evangeline. Oh dear. Uh, do I still have control of the vehicle? You do. You can try and back it up as it tries to to reach for you and come at you in, in the door, the window of the uh, door. Yeah, I'd like to run it over if I could. All right. Let me get... I'm going to give you... Well, you need to make a defense roll first as these okay. things were not um, perturbed by the attack on them. They just continued coming. Right. I also did take another ability. Um, uh, nature of the Beast. I'm trained in the lore of flesh-eating non-humanoid creatures. I don't know if this counts but I can recognize them, know their weakness, and know their habits and behaviors. It is a humanoid creature. Mm. So I would say okay. this is not so, quite a fit. Never mind. All right. Then a defense roll. Against a level three, it is a nine. I rolled a 16. Awesome. You, you are able to defend against its attack and get the vehicle back under control. One of the lights is now broken out. Darn it. Ah, oh, blast. Mr. Booker is going to be so upset at what has happened to his poor vehicle in the last couple of weeks. Paw him. <clears throat> and you're able to get control of your vehicle and, and do another drive. Can I get a Darn drive it. roll? I will roll again. A one. <laughs> <laughs> we you... have no XP. We have no XP right now. God damn it. <laughs> You back up hard, and you hit the trees back off the back side of the road. <laughs> Bam! This truck is just taking a beating. And as you look forward, you see that person you had crushed between the vehicle and the bridge. Its head shakes for a moment, and it stands again. William, don't you dare blame women drivers. I'm uniquely incompetent. <laughs> And as you're uh -huh. trying to go forward, you you um, now have two of them blocking the, the bridge and one of them coming up towards the side that, you know, William is on. William, you feel an arm pull it on you from inside the vehicle. Mm -hmm. and they grab your shirt. You know, it ain't just the Drury's. It ain't the Drury's. It's the loves and the idols and the... And the they're all together. They're all together, you know. You gotta. We do. You, you can save. You can. You can save. Uh, it goes back under. And can I get an initiative roll from the two of you? And this thing already knows its initiative as they get mm. get close to the vehicle. Again. God damn it. That is an eighteen, and I'm trained. Mm. Eight. And I am not. All right. William, what are you doing as you see this horrid humanoid monstrous thing coming back towards you, reaching out almost? Its eyes are black, like like it's hollow. Mm-hmm. So I'm on the side of, like, where we kind of smashed into the side of the bridge. I'm on that side of the truck. Yes. You are. And what passenger side is has hit that area and Evangeline backed into some trees. Yes. The I'm road, just trying to get a better perspective right where we're at. You. All it would take is putting it back into first and going forward. You can go forward, but the truck has taken damage from several different angles and is... Uh, and the folks are coming from rough. the beginning of the bridge. Two of them from the bridge. One of them kind of walking like its bones are partly broken or something. And the one on your side is not broken, just knocked back from a moment ago. Uh, seeing that this is not a person anymore, um, I'm just going to hit it with my hatchet, knowing that this is not good. Okay. All right. Fuck. A one? No, that's a three. Better than a one, but still not great. <laughs> that's too bad. No GM intrusion for that one. So you swing mm -hmm. and you miss. We'll get to it in... Actually, it goes next. So it is going to swing at you. Can you give me a defense roll? Mm -hmm. You're rolling against a three, so you need above a nine. 
Fucking another three. Okay, that one's going away for a minute. Another three. Nice. So you take four points of damage as it claws at your arms and its hands unusually strong. They tear at your flesh as they pull pull back against you. Dig in without really claws, more like just fingernails. Just, just dig deep and tear. Off. Is this going into my might pool or it, yes, it's pulling from your might pool. Okay. If eventually you see the other two are heading towards the car, they are not up to it yet, but they'll be there next time. Uh, is there something. any way for me to try running them over? Oh, yes. You can put the car in gear and take off driving again. Ah, blast! A 12? A 12 will work. You can go forward and they stay forward in front of the vehicle. Finally! You roll them over as you head to the bridge and the one that was on William's side has fallen behind as you finally go over the bridge without hitting the posts. Have at you! <clears throat> One of the lights is out on the truck. You see some smoke starting to rise from the from the hood, but the car is, the vehicle is still going. And you are going to the doctor. Well, isn't that just the bee's knees? We got through that one, William. Yep. <laughs> Went through that. Great. <clears throat> How you doing over there? We're fine. Victor? Fine enough. Vic Victor seems to be out. He's in and out. Out currently. Fuck. We need and to get back. The worst crime of all of this is we've committed alcohol abuse. Luckily, you Spilling know right, everywhere. Luckily, you know right where the doctor is because you have needed um, prescriptions for certain medications uh, of uh, certain types. Although you actually you got your medications from certain types from your own kin. Family takes care of family sometimes. That's true, but you do know where the doctor doctor is. The medical doctor, not the nature doctor. Mm -hmm. And you pull up, William, you go to um, open the door and, you know, Victor is still unconscious. Calling him out and just like walking, like walking up to the door and then just with my heavy work boot just, bah, 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 he's just on the door he's of course since unconscious just dead weight just yeah you know. that's hence the boot <laughs> can you make me a perception check please 16 and i think am i trained in perception i don't remember uh yeah i'm trained i just now became trained in perception with our tier two abilities you do not think this is just dead weight Um, he, he just starts kicking the door even harder now because he, he doesn't, he's not a medical professional and he doesn't have the Give me a my roll. I'm going to give knowledge. you, a, I'm going to give you an easing on that because you have adrenaline going at a level that is unconscionably high. Uh, hello? Anyone there? Um, and a light I, goes I'll on throw... upstairs. I was going to say, I'll throw on whatever edge I need to, because it, yeah. <clears throat> um, what, what that's a 12. You, yeah, you, you kick that door open, and just as the light goes on in the back, and, and the doctor... We um, need help! Well, get him in here, get him in here. What what happened? And I'm, oh, this is Mr. McSweeney. Victor, get, get yeah. Victor in here. Get him on the, on the table. Yeah. <clears throat> Here, can you guys stand out there, please? I don't need people over me as I'm exam. Oh, and he. Yeah, it's bad. You might want an additional hand or two. It might be better if we stayed. All right, and while you stay and you do doctor, and I'm going to cut back to those in the woods heading to the uh, the north at this point. <clears throat> you are smoking as you walk, not smoking realizing too much. Forty years that is going to be terrible for your walking ability, but. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if Jericho's around in 40 years, it's because he's a booger. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, with the 1920s. Nobody knew what cigarettes did us yet. No. So, uh, no, nope. <laughs> I think I have a prescription for him, actually. Um, <laughs> for the nerves. 
Um, but I'm going to uh, guide Annie in the direction of some stones where I've had important mystical moments years ago um, mm. to see what's if there's any vibe check necessary because we're already kind of halfway there a little bit. Yeah, as you're as you're heading, you know, there's there's always some kind of um, an eerie stillness as you get to that area and you you get to the edge the outskirts of where the standing stones are annie you have never seen this you did not even know this existed but there the are standing on stones oh, where did my hold on uh some some sort of old witch thing annie i, I stumbled on it years ago and <clears throat> to be fair didn't feel like i was ready for it um, it just felt like things I didn't understand, but I don't understand anything that's happening right now. So I felt might as well knock on a door. Can I get a perception check from the two of you as you come in? The good thing is because it's a clear and there's there's moonlight kind of flooding the area and allowing there to be some ability to see. I got uh, a 14. 13. Oh. Um, and if it's intellect, I have an edge. It, it is intellect. It is. Jericho's real smart. <clears throat> yeah, you, you see that there are slime trails coming from the ground in the middle of here like you had seen back at the mine. And sitting right in the center of them, you see poking out of the ground in one place the photographer the from the chest up and a little lower than that from the legs up. Looks like he's been broken in half or something. And there's a pool of blood. He, is, he does not look like he is um, alive. Uh, but he looks like he's been fresh? into the ground or something. Uh, like, is, he, is it fresh or is he starting to decompose a little? Um, are you going to go all the way up to him? What do you think, Annie? Uh, do you think we were uh, walking with a flashlight or lantern? Or since we're yeah, from here, do you think we were in the dark? I have a flashlight on me, so I can I could flash the face of the photographer, and we can maybe gauge from the face how it sunken has begun he decomposition. And you know, well, he uh, he definitely been here a bit. I'm gonna look real close while Annie holds the light. Um, right. I'll snake smell him. When you get close, you notice one thing that that strikes you that one of his hands has been removed violently. And there's not a hand right here. Um, Would you, do you think someone might have needed a hand, Annie? Like, uh, do you think literally that's what happened? Um, I know I'm pretty funny, but in this situation, do you think they literally needed a hand because we have the one they needed? Yep. Yep, they... They needed a hand, and I wonder if uh, that hand belongs to uh, whoever Barbara was attached to, maybe? Maybe. I I'm going to look around if... for clues. I'll turn on my lantern, too, just so we have right. a little more light. Yeah, and as you look around, you see there's, in the field here, these slime trails come out in like a star pattern from the the center where these body, this body is pulled earthward. It's not like a clean cut in the middle or anything. It's like a... It, it doesn't actually look like, like he's cut as much as he's been yanked partially under the ground and some of the ground is just above him. Like he's still connected, just bent in half in the... In, oh, in the all right. Like maybe pulled through a <laughs> hole that was too small for his yes. whole body so he bent? Yes. Um, the standing stones, uh, do they appear, is, is there any liquid or slime on them as though they've been used for ritual or anything of that sort? If I could apply trying to understand magic to what I'm seeing in front of me. There are several things that to someone who understands magic would, would see. There are, There is blood that has been splashed onto each of the stones at different points. Where it has been splashed, oddly enough, there seem to be just the remnants or, of what look like 
carved shapes. Not letters like you would recognize, but maybe symbols. Can I get an mm -hmm. intellect roll from both of you? Mm-hmm. 11 and an edge. I got a... Oh, it's a natural one. <laughs> and he's having a breakdown. No. This is too weird for me. I don't like it. You actually, Jericho, think that you have seen some of these maybe in that book that Evangeline had when she was mm -hmm. showing you that book couple of these symbols look right. Annie, while you're looking at this, the oddest thing comes across you. You get this feeling of loss kind of coming over you. You see, as you're looking at this thing, the, the symbols don't look right. They look disturbing to your mind in a way that is, maybe people aren't supposed to see these. I don't know. Maybe that. Don't stare too hard at that, Annie. Um, yeah. This is this is a darker side of the things I like to play with a little bit, but uh, there's also a tire that you see kind of in the grass. A tire. A tire. Like a swing, no, or like loose. Just laying right. in the grass. That would have been real nice right now, actually. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Uh, is it? Uh, does the tire look like it had? Uh, been stabbed through or slashed through? No, actually, it it is connected to some kind of metal equipment, like bars and stuff. Not like on a on a automobile. It's bigger than that, and it's rounder, maybe. Does it match an airplane tire? Now that you think about it, it kind of reminds you of the tire on the airplane. What the? I think a bit of the debris from this airplane may have. May the have... tire. I was trying yeah. to figure out where that was from. But we saw the photographer after <clears throat> that. That means he was brought here where that was brought or where it dropped. The tire looks like Does it look like it dropped there. or? Yeah, it looks does like it, look it dropped like... there. Okay. It left a big indent in the dirt and everything where it had fallen. And so there are also tracks from some kind of a vehicle or a couple of vehicles that are fresh-ish within the last couple of days that you can see kind of heading down a path that you don't really rightly remember a path when you hear before Jericho, but it looks like a path was made recently by the cars. I don't like any reason someone would need to be able to come here quickly or often. Um, any we can look into this further or we can take what we've just learned and skedaddle and try to come back with our companions possibly in the light of day but what are you thinking and the ground shakes feeling? a little bit while you're standing there oh you man. have felt that before around your house once recently mm -hmm. do i feel that ground shake as well oh yeah I say uh, we should probably get out of here. I, I better go check on my dad, and uh, we need to come back here with everybody we can we can muster. Mm -hmm. Is his camera here, or a, a, a bag that looks like it belonged to the photographer? No. Anything like that? All right. It is not. All right, we've got a long walk ahead, Annie. We do. I'll uh, <laughs> I'll get my gun ready, and I'll just like have it loaded and. Ready to go. While Let's she's doing back. that, I'm just staring at those stones and looking at those marks. Like, Annie, they make my inner spirit goosebump, I think. Annie, when you, when you turn around, you see that the photographer is only a little bit left stuck out of the ground at this point. There's only, a, like, a bit of an arm, part of his legs, but it looks like a bit more of it has been yanked into the, into the dirt than had been before. Jer, I think it's time we run. We better run. I'm actually much better at running than I was last time I had to run with you, Annie. So um, yeah. that'll be good. <laughs> and we just start running. All right. Coffee and trying to roll a cigarette. Um, <laughs> the ground rumbles again as you start to run. We are going to cut back to the doctor. And, <laughs> um, 
back at the at the doctor. The doctor is, what happened to him? He, what are these wounds? And he started to to pull the wounds and trying to figure out if he can resuscitate. And he uh, starts he trying to resuscitate. Yes, he was attacked by some sort of creature in a tunnel. We found him in in the woods. Uh, we drove him here as far fast as we could. Um, uh, what can I do to help? Do you do you know anything about medicine? Um, I, as much as anyone else does. I'm. I, they, I've studied a bit of biology, so I can do what you need me to. Just instruct me. In that and, cabinet. Uh, I, yes. In that cabinet, grab me of the bottle, and, there, and he says there's a, a name on the bottle or a word mm -hmm. on the bottle. Look for yes. that and bring me that over with with um, a need, uh, you know, a, uh, oh, I forgot the word. <laughs> needle syringe? and sutures? Uh, a needle. That, you know, oh, oh, oh. Um, like, okay. Like a, a syringe. Yeah. Got and it. Okay. William, you grab me some some more of these these cloths and and get me a bucket. Yeah. You're He's just like these wounds if you don't mind. What happened to your mm -hmm. arm? We'll deal with that later. We got to get mixed. Fuck. And just runs to go go for whatever needs to be done. All right. You you go there's a bucket out in the in the other room. You grab the the medicines of Angeline. All right. And the doctor is pushing on his heart, trying to get his heart to come to start beating again. <clears throat> As he's doing it, you see a big breath take suddenly happen by by Mr. McSweeney, and there's <gasps> where's Annie? And he pops up, and like it's almost like the energy came back into him like there was not before. <clears throat> Uh, you're right. Where where's Annie? And as he's she's saying fine. This, she's on her way back right now. Yes. You know how when when automobiles go past a a a room you're in and the lights kind of move across the wall at night? You see that happen two or three times as vehicles go past the this this place. Can I look out the window? That you see the backs of several cars heading up Mine Road, heading towards either the mines or maybe the Love Mansion. That's up there, too. You know that. You've been told that already. That is strange. More cars yeah, up to the mine. Right now. Yeah. We can't focus on that right now. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, uh, Victor, are, are you all right? Uh, uh, talk to us. How do you, how do you feel? It, it, uh, She's on her way. Okay. She she's get, right behind us. Y'all didn't get she's taken right from that thing in the mine, right? No, no we're no, all okay. Lose it. Oh, thank goodness. I, I believe it's dead. Oh. Oh, thank God. You did a good job, sir. Now I didn't know no such thing. I am not a good person, and and I would appreciate not being sir? thrown in that category. We've got more time Sir, you did a good thing. Yeah. I didn't say you were a good person. And there's more time for self-deprecation later. Right now, we need to focus. What were you doing? I, I was trying to kill the thing. It, and you did it. Well, you did, did help us I, kill it. I was attacked by it, and I, I ended up in the, going into the, the home there to get, get away. And How it's did, gone. Oh. Now, uh, what possessed you to do that alone? Why? Well, whom else am I going to get? And you just see, like, immediate exasperation <laughs> on William's face. Just, like, sucks it in, deep breath, and just starts tending to the wounds and just cleaning up, doing whatever the doctor tells him to do. As... The doctor's having you clean the wounds of the pus and blood that's been that accumulated mm -hmm. in some of them. Clean them Not... down. And you can now, tell how... his eyes yeah. look heavy. Like, he looks like he's going to go pass out again or something soon now now victor focus for a moment how did you know it was there and how did you know what was there i i had found it a long time ago i couldn't do nothing about it because it was i don't know how you say it it was part of of drury like they're like like they're connected in some way and doing anything to that to 
she just warned me. And I had to protect See? Annie. I couldn't let Annie get hurt, so. She who? Um, Annie knows who Drury is. She'll, she'll, and I, I've lived a life so bad, I don't even know if I can say anymore who's done what around here. It's so bad. This place is just like a hell on earth. I don't even know how we're all alive at this point. Drury Sedora, you know the... <sighs> yes, that, that was what I thought you meant. I just wanted to make sure I understood. She like owns so much of this place. Not even so much, she owns so many of the people in this place, including me until, until now. But how? Isn't, isn't she dead? Didn't y'all see her the other day? You weren't there, were you, Evangeline? I was not. Uh, the other Ms. Zidora, I believe, uh, kept me from going. It's like, it's like her kin keeps her coming. I don't know how. She's supposed to be dead. I thought I killed her once and then she was not killed. I don't know how it happens. Uh, could you clarify that last bit? I, I, I stabbed at her with, with my knife and I, I mean, Ms. Mix, Mrs. McSweeney was there too and, and that's how they took her because I, when I stabbed her, she just rose up like she was not even affected by my blade. You witnessed this? What? You witnessed this? I did it. And I, I she mean, the rose rising. up like she was not even hurt. Hmm. Where was this? In the mine or elsewhere? N no. This was at what at what at the time was my our house. Oh. Annie was was a baby at the at the time. She wouldn't have memories of that, of course. Yes. <clears throat> what what brought that on? Why why was she there? Why did you stab her? I mean, it was it was a long time ago, you know. It was all, It was um. How do I even say it? She, she you had hired a debt. me. She hired me to find. I found a way into the mines that were not the normal mines, of course, and then she put pressure on me in other ways to stop going into the mines because it it was I was stealing from her, right. I mean, it was their mind, the Sedoras, the Loves, the Idols, and the Elders. A bunch of liars, all of them anyway. <clears throat> but when I had, I had gotten caught, and they were going to, at first they said they were going to prosecute us, you know, with the law, but I was not afraid of that. That's not really a thing. And then they said they were going to take my wife. They were going to take Ms. Ms. Mrs. McSweeney or my daughter. And Annie. Annie. So I, of course, bless her heart, my wife had put out um, cakes for them. And there was a knife there that was going to be used for breaking bread. And I grabbed that knife. And before the goons that were with her, holding my wife down while we talked could do a thing about it. I buried that knife in her heart over and over at least three or four times. And the goons didn't do nothing. They stood there and I tired from the stabbing and then she rose up 
and pulled the knife out. And she said, so it's your wife. And then the goons did come and beat me. And she was gone. They said, and they knew, I knew if I went further, it would be Annie too. I'm so sorry. How those those men, Hagoons, were they the three sons? Yes. But they spoke. They were of. like them. I wouldn't say they're them. I'd say they were like them. She's she's got she came with a bunch of big burly guys. Mm. Yeah. That would be the type. Understood. Ah, uh, William, do you have any questions before we leave uh, Victor here to rest? 